This is KGW News at 11. Now at 11, several groups take to the streets from North Portland to downtown. Police have already ordered protesters away from the North Precinct. They're gathered now in front of the police union headquarters in North Portland. And police have said protesters have broken in and lit the building on fire. It has now been declared a riot. Good evening and thanks for staying with us. I'm Pat Doris in for Brittany Falkers tonight. Meanwhile, tonight, once again, we're seeing another group outside the federal courthouse in downtown Portland. Within the past 15 minutes, we started seeing tear gas deployed on the crowd. Earlier, protesters had dismantled a fence, a large fence around the federal courthouse, and were using part of it apparently to block the doors of the courthouse. This is where demonstrators have clashed with both federal and local officers for the last several nights. And we've learned the federal government has issued a special security related flight restriction and banned all drones over the downtown area area for the next month, although government drones will be allowed. Well, the violence downtown has become not only a physical flashpoint, as we're seeing again tonight, but also a political one and now a legal one. Oregon's attorney general is suing the federal government over the treatment of protesters. Galen Etlin reports. This is a Portland police bureau. Officers and demonstrators clashed into the early hours of Saturday morning. Leave the area by traveling to the west. Scenes like this in small areas of Portland have fueled big commentary from thousands of miles away. There are people attacking our democracy and they're in the streets of Portland with the encouragement of Mayor Wheeler. Portland police confirmed they did not use tear gas, but witnesses say federal officers called in by the Trump administration did. Which is purely political theater. It's not about public safety. Oregon Governor Kate Brown and Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler fighting back. For the better part of a week, the situation in our city was de-escalated. Speaking on MSNBC Friday, Mayor Wheeler said violent demonstrations were winding down, but federal agents seriously wounding an unarmed protester and throwing others into unmarked vans sparked a new firestorm. Things were going well enough that we predicted we would have this all done by the weekend. We don't want them here. We don't need them here. And they're making an already tense situation much, much worse. It's not to the point where it's a war zone, you know. Robert McKizzy has been adding murals to boarded up businesses downtown. He supports the nonviolent Black Lives Matter demonstrations. And I think that that will cause a bigger problem to bring the feds in here. That sentiment echoed at a vigil for the First Amendment Friday night. If I'm going out, I'm going out fighting. Portland City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty demanding federal agents leave. Abusing our community members and people at the highest levels of government are saying there's nothing we can do. Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum also joining the fight. She's suing federal agencies for violating civil rights and detaining protesters without cause. This is a direct threat to American democracy. Mayor Wheeler calling out the president and sharing this warning. If Americans think this can't happen in your city, think again, because the Trump administration, they're on the hunt. They're on the hunt for anything they can do to bolster that man's failing campaign. A clash over political points and civil rights. A.G. Rosenblum's lawsuit will be followed by a motion for a temporary restraining order to stop these types of federal detentions. In Portland, I'm Galen Etlin for KGW News. Portland City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty, a longtime critic of the police bureau, now wants to take it over from the mayor. She put that message out on Twitter today, writing in part, quote, I demand action right now. Mayor Wheeler, if you can't control the police, give me the Portland Police Bureau. This comes after Hardesty said on Straight Talk this week that she would be open to being the police commissioner. But honestly, I think if he gave me the police bureau, we'd see a rush of retirement, and then we could start hiring the police force that we want. Hardesty already heads other first responder bureaus like the Fire Bureau. She said it just makes sense to have all those bureaus under the same leadership. Portland mayors have historically kept the police bureau under their control. If you missed her interview on Straight Talk, you can catch it tomorrow at 630, or you could watch it right now on the KGW YouTube page. There was another type of rally in Hillsboro today, this one against racism, but also in support of law enforcement officers. The organizers said it doesn't have to be one or the other. Demonstrators lined the street outside the Hillsboro Police Department holding up signs. Table was also set up for people to sign thank you cards. They'll be handed over to the officers. Thanks to viewer Moxie Black for sending us these photos of the event.
Earlier today, young artists gathered at Peninsula Park in North Portland to protest for Black Lives Matter. They did it by showing their creative expressions. It's really important to us that we uh, emphasize how there are multiple different ways of protesting and how through art and performance is also an act of protest. So that is what we are doing here today. Jada Commodore and her two friends organized the Portland Artist Rally and said it was a way to focus attention on the works of artists who are black, indigenous and people of color. Meanwhile, in southeast Portland, families filled the grassy field at Lentz Park. A rally was held in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and also to raise awareness about a recent deadly shooting in their Lentz neighborhood. The victim, an 18 year old black woman. We're trying to draw uh, awareness. awareness to yeah. the Black Lives Matter movement east of 82nd and other neighborhoods where black and indigenous people of color also live. We don't live downtown. None of us can afford to live down there. So I want this movement to be where the people that are affected by it live. Shea India Harris was shot and killed last Friday. No one's been charged with her death. Today, police announced a $2,500 reward for information leading to an arrest. A group of high school students called the Oregon Student Voice want to pull police officers out of every school in the Tri-County area. As Christelle Kumwe reports, students believe the resource officers do more harm than good. There is so much momentum and potential to change things currently. And so we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of that momentum and doing as much good as possible with it. Emily Zhou is a sophomore at Lake Ridge High School. She's talking about the Black Lives Matter movement and the fact that Portland police recently pulled all their officers from public schools. Emily and Samantha Block are part of a group called Oregon Student Voice. They hope to rally teens and force police out of more schools. We really want to emphasize making students active participants in their own education. The group started a petition focusing on 18 school districts in Multnomah, Clackamas and Washington counties. Students believe school resource officers don't help. What is clear, however, are the harms of school resource officers. They increase the amount of arrests, school suspensions, expulsions within schools, especially for students of color. They want police out, but want the money to stay. The goal is to first remove school resource officers and then to keep that funding within school districts in order to provide de-escalation training for teachers, more mental health resources and programs, and more counselors. Besides gathering names, the group will connect with students in other districts. From this petition, we are also connecting with people and giving them information as to how to testify in front of school boards and how to take further action. While COVID-19 could delay classes this fall, students are moving forward with their petition now. So it's important that we take these steps now while there's still momentum built up uh, to make sure that by the time that school does fully reopen, these steps have already been taken. Christel Kumwe, KGW News. Now to some news we're tracking in Northeast Portland. What started as a disturbance call has now turned into a death investigation. It happened last night in the 2500 block of Northeast 122nd Avenue. Neighbors tell us there are multiple victims. So far, police are being tight lipped about what they know. It's pretty shocked, right? When something like this happens right next to you, um, you know, it's shocking. It's something you kind of see on the news. Like anytime there's a loss of life, it's tragic. It doesn't matter what the situation or scenario is. Police are focusing on this gray home. Neighbors say there's a family connection to the house next door, but police have not confirmed any connection between those two houses. We'll bring you updates as soon as we learn more.